This review has been made possible by Chevrolet of Naperville. As you know, Chevy has tons of brand new cars and trucks available for purchase, but did you know that they also have a remarkable selection of used cars? Head on over to ChevroletofNaperville.com and look through hundreds of used cars for sale right now. Alright, what's up guys? My name is Zach and today I am driving a 2019 Volkswagen Jetta R-Line. Up front is a 1.4 liter inline 4 turbo and down below is an 8 speed automatic transmission. Now I am super excited to be driving this here at Jetta for a couple of reasons. Mainly the fact that I feel like I don't bring enough Volkswagen products to the channel and so I'm trying to remedy that today. But before we get on to anything else, I have a website, ZachPradle.com, where you can buy stickers like this retro sticker pack or big friggin' bottle sticker, both with free shipping. You could also submit your own vehicle to be reviewed by me through a quick and easy submission form, and you could read my behind-the-scenes blog to see what I'm filming before it comes out on the channel. But let's get back to that 1.4 liter turbo. Now Volkswagen has been using this engine all throughout the 2010s on not only the sixth generation Jetta, but now this here seventh generation Jetta. And it makes about 147 horsepower, which honestly isn't all that bad. It is a little gutless. Down low when the turbo isn't spooling, you do feel like you're driving a little economy car, but Honestly, in my eyes, that's not a bad thing. We'll talk about in a second. Like I said, paired to an eight speed automatic. I like it, it's shifting well, it's quiet. It hasn't done anything too weird yet. So I can appreciate that. Last but not least, the Jetta is front wheel drive and the R-Line specifically gets the electronic differential lock. Basically what this does is it sort of simulates having a limited slip differential without Volkswagen actually having to spend the money on it. When you take a corner really hard or do some more spirited driving, it will actually add a little bit of brake pressure to the inside brake to help cut out understeer. And I can honestly tell you this works. It does cut out the understeer by quite a bit. However, it's not a full limited slip differential. With that out of the way, let's talk about the interior. Well, in front of me, I have four gauges and a screen. On the left is my tachometer and coolant temperature. On the right is my speedometer and fuel. And then in the center, I do get a little black and white screen. Nothing too crazy or interesting here. However, I like that I get it and you can customize it ever so slightly. On the steering wheel, on the left, I have my cruise control and volume options. And on the right, I have my voice commands, skip track, and some selector dials. The steering wheel is one of my favorite parts of this car, and you might be looking at that like, Zach, why? Well, it's really light and it's thin, just like older Volkswagens, something we'll talk about towards the end of the video. Off to the left, I have my headlight switches, and on the door, I have my lock and unlock, power mirrors, and power windows, of course. Moving into the center, we do have the Volkswagen infotainment system. I'm not going to spend too much time on this. Something I do like is that you get some extra information when you hit car. You can look at like your average miles per hour and time in the car and blah, blah, blah. This does come with Apple CarPlay and Android Auto and the backup camera's all right. The backup lines don't adjust themselves when you turn the steering wheel, which is okay. And it's okay quality, something I would expect out of a Jetta. Down below that, I have two climate control vents and a hazard switch. And then I have my climate control. Something missing here that I would have liked to have seen is the dual zone climate. However, not the end of the world. Off to the far left, I have temperature, fan speed in the center, and where to send it off to the right, as well as I get AC, rear to frost, recirculating, and off as their own buttons up top. Then we do have a cubby with a USB outlet. This is actually to plug in to the infotainment system. And then moving down to the shifter area, up to the upper right, I have a 12 volt outlet, very nice. And around the shifter, I have my power parking brake, automatic start stop on and off, my eco mode. And off to the right, I have a bunch of dead switches. The R line is actually a mid tier trim, which is kind of interesting. Then we get the shifter itself. I really like the feel of it, it has a nice, click into gear when I move it and I don't have any complaints. Then we do have cup holders, so we will do a big friggin' bottle test here in the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta and unfortunately it fails. Now the actual inlet to the cup holder is the sort of octagon shape, which is really weird. Not a big fan of it. And of course that means that the big friggin' bottle doesn't fit. So 2019 Jetta R-Line fails the big friggin' bottle test.
Then I do get a little center console and the seats. The seats are very plain. They don't say anything on them. They're not the most comfortable things in the world. However, they're not uncomfortable. They're just very basic seats. However, speaking of seats, we do have back seats. So let's go do a back seat review. All right, so we're in the back of the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta R-Line and a couple of things to note back here. First of all, headroom, not super great. These seats actually sit up a lot higher than the front seat. I sort of get that stadium style seating, which is kind of interesting. I don't get a center console, very basic back seats back here. I could see where there would be vents, but there's no vents back here. However, the knee room is actually really, really good. This is my driving position, and I still have a couple of inches between my knees and the front seat. I'm 5'11", not a small guy. And so I fit back here decently. I think if I slouch my neck a little bit, I could sit back here pretty comfortably. Now let's talk about the trunk and cargo space, and then we'll talk about the looks. All right, so around the back of the 2019 Jetta R-Line, we do have a little trunk popper here on the key fob. It actually does flip all the way up, which is very nice. Once we're in here, nothing really too crazy. However, tons and tons of cargo space. Really, really happy with this because it is a full-size sedan or at least larger sedan or larger vehicle than the Golf. We get plenty of trunk space, which is fantastic. Come down here. I could pull this up. I don't get a spare tire. Just, I guess, some jumper cables and fix a flat, but no spare tire in the Jetta, unfortunately. Now we got to talk about the looks, and I think that's one of the best qualities of the Jetta. I think it really looks good. This is the seventh generation of the Volkswagen Jetta, which is actually not sold in Europe from the research that I've done, which is interesting. I guess Europe prefers the Golf, and they also have the Up, which is a vehicle we don't get here, which is even smaller than a Golf. This is in platinum gray metallic, which I think is a relatively handsome color. However, there is also this orange color you could get them in, and I think that would be my pick if I were to buy this vehicle. But now, let's get on to my final thoughts here on the 2019 Volkswagen Jetta R-Line. Well, I really like this car a lot more than I thought I was going to. And the reason for that is the driving feel, honestly, because it feels very unapologetically Volkswagen. The steering wheel, as I mentioned earlier, is really thin and the steering is really, really light. Just like the Carmen Ghia and Volkswagen bus of which I've reviewed from the 1970s. Yes, the engine feels a little underpowered, but so did older Volkswagen. Neither the bus nor Carmen Ghia that I drove cracked the triple digits with horsepower. There's a sort of charm in that. This car has good visibility. It looks good. It looks honest. It's not overstated. It's just here to move people from point A to point B with a little smirk on its face while doing so. That's how I feel about this car. I really can't get over these driving dynamics and just how similar they are to the Volkswagens of the 70s, at least as close as a modern car can be. As close as you can get while still having traction control and that electronic differential and a touch screen inside. Cars of today will never 100% feel like they used to, but I have to say this is pretty dang close. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Huge thank you to Chevy of Naperville for letting me take out their Volkswagen Jetta R-Line. This is one of their used vehicles. I've been working with Chevy and Naperville for a very long time. They are absolutely awesome. And their information is up on the screen as well as linked in the description below. But I hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to rate the video, comment on the video, and subscribe if you really liked it. Take care, guys.